What's up guys, today we are gonna be talking about blocking in stepped versus blocking in spline. Now, I've gotten a lot of people who say, you know what, I just don't like blocking in stepped because you know when I take it out of stepped, it's, it's very floaty. The thing I like about spline is I get to you know see the timing and the spacing and it's really helpful to do that. Now, I'm gonna say something that's maybe a little controversial and that is if you're blocking in stepped and you take it out of stepped, into spline and it's floaty, that means your blocking is trash. Let me say that again. If you take your blocking from stepped into spline and it's floaty, what that tells me is that your blocking is trash. It's bad, it's poop, it's caca. You need to stop, all right? And what I mean by trash is that you need more keys in your blocking. So a rule of thumb that I always go by is the more complicated the move, the more keys is needed. For example, best way to look at this is let's say a backflip versus a punch. If you're blocking a, ba a backflip out in Maya, you're going to need more keys to flesh out the animation than you would a punch. So for example, let's look at my lightsaber animation. This is probably something I would do, you know, back, back in the day. I'd look at this and be like, you know what, I like the timing, I like, you know, how it feels, it looks good, let's take this bad boy into spline. Now. This is what it would look like once I take it into spline. It would look horrible, right? It'd be floaty. Like, yo, what happened? And I'd get very upset. I would get, I would honestly get extremely triggered from looking at my blocking, like, yo, the blocking is awesome. It's almost done. And then taking it into spline and just seeing my animation just disappear right in front of me. It's just like, this isn't what I was just looking at. And the reason why, because you haven't fully developed your timing, right? You haven't fully developed your blocking, your timing, your spacing, your holds, where are your ease ins, where are your ease outs, where are your arcs, where's the anticipation? All of that needs to be built into your blocking, all right? So that when you take it out of blocking, you don't really have that much work to worry about because all of it's been you know, done for you while you blocked it out. Now, all of this has to go back into your planning phase and how you, you plan the animation, but that's another story. So now let's look at a slightly more advanced blocking of this animation. You can tell right off the bat which one you would rather have. If someone gave you the first blocking, like, yo, here you go, animate it. And someone gave you the second blocking and said, here you go, animate it. You, of course, would rather have this blocking to deal with because it's more fleshed out. You can see more of the arcs. You can see the holds. There's even some anticipation there. So once you take this into spline, this is what it's going to look like. It's not perfect, don't get me wrong, but it's way it's a way better starting point than what you would previously have. And I think that's what many people need to understand. Now, unless you just prefer spline, it's just a preference, you just like it over blocked, then so be it. But if you want to say, hey, when I do blocking and step and take it into spline, it's just horrible, that's why I prefer to do it in spline. Um, that's, that's not an excuse. That just tells me that your blocking is trash. That's what that means. Now, one thing you can do is a little hybrid. This is kind of something that I actually uh, do when I'm animating is that I'll do it in blocking. I'll get an advanced, you know, uh, advanced blocking of the animation that I'm doing, and then I'll spline it just to get a feel of how, you know, what needs more poses, what needs more keys, right? As I said before, rule of thumb, the more complicated the movement, the more keys is needed. The more you're gonna need more precise timing on a movement, the more keys you're gonna need to define it. Because if you're not defining those keys, well, guess who is? The computer. The computer's not an animator, right? The computer is AI, and it's not smart enough to know what you mean. So you're gonna have to babysit it. you rather babysit it in blocking and stuck than babysit it when it comes to the graph editor. Because trust me, when you get into the graph editor, it is gonna be, it's gonna be a pain. It's gonna be a pain, and you can avoid that pain by doing most of the work in your planning and in your blocking. Now, of course, a lot of this is gonna be done for you already if you shoot reference, which I always, always strongly recommend. You shoot reference. I suggest you plan out your shot, shoot reference for it, and then use that reference to do your blocking. Anyways, guys, that's the video. I hope it helped. If you guys have any questions or comments, leave them down below or shoot me an email at amazinganimyt at gmail.com. And until next time, guys, keep animating.